205 or something. Yep. Yours and his. Courtney's rocking out to her and my son's favourite song, which is Ziggy Albert. Ziggy Albert's. I was about to start filming and she's like, wait, this is our favourite song. He starts kicking. Is he kicking? No. Okay. It's not loud enough. So I'm seven days out from my first chemo, which was seven days ago. I've shaved the beard because I was feeling kind of homeless every morning when I woke up and looked in the mirror. So I got rid of it, plus it's all probably gonna fall out anyway. And uh, today I'm feeling pretty good. I've had a up and down kind of seven days. I obviously spent the first three, two, three days in the hospital after chemo because of the fever reaction that I had to it. It was good to be home after that and then the following two or three days I struggled quite a bit. Uh, mainly just with like nausea, reflux and obviously a bit of fatigue. Um, had some, some, some stuff going on with my throat as well, my glands and my throat. I'm not sure if that's to do with the chemo or why I've got to ask the specialist when I go back. A real sore jaw and real sore throat. And it's actually affecting my voice a little bit. Like I feel like I get real tired. My voice gets tired when I talk. Today, what I've decided to do, uh, I decided this a couple of weeks ago and I booked it in, was uh, I'm gonna go do some hypnosis and some NLP therapy, which is neuro-linguistics programming. And the the reason Courtney's done Euro linguistics programming before, uh, when we were in Turkey, yep. in Istanbul, she wanted to sing on a stage in front of people, and she's always had this fear of singing on a stage in front of people unless she was drunk. So she did this Euro linguistics programming and then went and sung at this at a hotel, five star hotel, mm. was it? Yeah. With the piano guy, it's pretty cool. So what it is is basically training your mind um, to get rid of specific blockages and thoughts and maybe preconceived ideas that you might have limit you or limit your beliefs. So it's something I do is meditate quite frequently because obviously I'm a strong believer in my mind's ability to heal the body because and I have think a lot of time on your hands. <laughs> plus I have a lot of time on my hands sitting around just being sick. Why I'm doing it is because you know, it's a bit like your business, you know, you can try and do everything yourself, but sometimes you just need a little bit of help with some stuff. And one of the decisions that I made for myself a couple of weeks ago, because my mind is such an integral part of the healing process, obviously the belief that you're going to get better, belief that you're healing, and then keeping away the negative thoughts like, you know, is the cancer going to go away and is it going to come back and how can we guarantee all these sort of things so it really comes down to your true belief within your mind and I have some limiting beliefs which I think everybody does which is in your subconscious mind you can be as positive thinking as you want and constantly affirm yourself but everyone has that subconscious thought that pops in every now and again like hey man remember when you read that article it said that you know this type of cancer will not respond to treatment and shit like that that you don't need in your mind through the healing process um, but the, the first thing the biggest thing is obviously to be aware of those thoughts and not try and be scared of them and accept them and then obviously do something to deal with them so that's what I'm doing I believe that my disease has come from a lot of underlying stress and anxiety as well as obviously environmental impacts as well but I made a conscious thought a few weeks ago that I really need to get the stress sorted out in my life. Even though I'm really laid back, sort of, would you say I'm a laid back person? When you're not in the kitchen, yeah. When I'm not in the kitchen, I'm a bit of a control freak, I know that. So that maybe has something to do with it, but I have this underlying stress in my life that obviously I don't deal with myself well. So I need to dig deep and really figure out through like this hypnosis or NLP ways I can deal with that. Just so that when I'm going through this healing process, nothing will hold me back. Nothing will hold me back. There's nothing to hold me back as far as my stress, anxiety, bad thoughts, negative thoughts, which are all normal things and they're perfectly fine to have. You need negative thoughts in your life. Your subconscious mind is like your own fight or flight stress protection mechanism but uh, get in the middle lane. 
but in a situation like this where you need your full belief on your side I've decided to seek some help of some people for hypnosis and NLP so we're about to go get a smoothie from the organic, organic market which is one that we had a couple of weeks ago before I had my chemo and it was amazing and I finally feel good enough to sort of be out of the house and get something to eat so we're going to get a smoothie we're going to do the hypnosis thing and then I think we're maybe going to try and go to Ikea if I'm feeling good enough Bring your mask? Yeah, I brought a mask. Gonna have to wear a mask in public, which is uh, uh, something I'm gonna have to You're adapt to. Just channeling your inner Asian darling. You can't say that. It's <laughs> <laughs> racist. But you are half Asian. Oh, yeah, I am. I actually am part Chinese, would you believe it or not? So that's what we're doing. I didn't follow up on my hypnotism appointment yesterday. I went and got hypnosis as part of I guess a wider group of therapies that I'm going to be partaking in through this whole process I think obviously it's a full spectrum approach that you need to have obviously we're going through the chemotherapy which is the chemical traditional side of it um, on lots of organic food uh, making sure I'm just taking in the right macros to keep the weight on hypnotism and the meditation to keep the mind right i didn't follow up on the video yesterday because i was a little bit like i don't know mellowed out mm. i guess you could say afterwards uh because and i was highly strong and she was high, highly strong strung when she picked me up because it took two hours it was mostly having a chat to the therapist about what issues i think i have with my stress and how i deal with them and he made some really interesting developments for me uh, because it's something that I've always been on as far as stress management and being mindful. I've had psychedelic experiences in the past so I'm quite aware of you know my mind and body connection and uh, sort of keeping the mind healthy but like I said there's always that underlying stress. And one of the more interesting things that I learned yesterday about the approach on the mind and how the mind deals with it and I want to try and share it as best I can with whoever wants to watch and you can see what is beneficial for me and what is not beneficial for me it immediately gave me a calmer demeanor yesterday on you know this therapist's interpretation on how you deal with things like stress and anxiety and one of the more interesting things that he said which I found quite interesting was that positive thinking is one of the worst ways to deal with stress and anxiety because positive thinking is a battle against a negative thought and wherever there's a battle situation battles can be won and lost and to cut a long story short uh, he's under the sort of his own view which made a lot of sense to me and I picked it up really fast was that our anxiety is of our already created anxiety and our stress already comes from our already created stress and our fears are of our fears that already exist so every time we try and make a positive thought which is a battle against a negative thought that battle can be won and lost and then on top of that we are feeling senses of failure every time we battle something like a negative thought or a stress or a fear or anxiety so the, anxi the anxiety or the fear arises and then we go okay no I can't think like that I need to think positive and you try and think positive and then when the fear or the thought arises again we feel like we've failed in a sense and then we've lost that battle and then our stress and anxiety comes from those positive thoughts that are trying to battle the negative thoughts so I'm a person that's full of analogies and I said this to him yesterday and I said the way that I'm seeing this that you're describing it to me with my analogy is if you're stuck in the woods in a cabin and you know a grizzly bear comes knocking on the door and the the worst way to deal with that grizzly bear is trying to keep the door shut and not let it in and you're going to lose that battle against an 11 foot thousand pound grizzly bear every single time because you're not going to win that battle of trying to not let it in the door and i said my analogy of the way he described it was so it's sort of like we let the grizzly bear in we allow the stress and the bad thought to happen he comes in has a sniff around 
and we might find that 90% of the time it's a natural occurrence our body is built that fear in for a reason and we need to allow it and accept it and let it happen and the more that we become comfortable with that fear anxiety or whatever it is coming in the room and sniffing around the more we drop off that battle mentality and the battle with a positive thought and the thought of a negative thought being pushed against the positive thought rather than just letting the bear come in and sniff around and we might find that it doesn't want to eat us in the first place it's just curious and it's a natural process and wants to come in see what's going on and the more we let that happen and I started practicing this yesterday you know if I had sort of any bad thoughts pop into my head I just let them be there I allowed them to be present I allowed them to sniff their way around and the moment I started doing that and not thinking that oh, I have to battle this with a positive thought immediately there was so much pressure I guess you could say taken off my mind in the fact that of just letting that happen just letting it happen let it come in let it sniff around so that's the lesson I learned from the hypnosis yesterday obviously some breathing techniques as well that I need to sort of master which he said everybody needs to master because it's one of the main things that activates our calm and our parasympathetic nervous system is really deep breath which is a deep breath all the way down into our navel and then all the way back up making sure the out breath is always longer than the in breath and the more we can practice this on a regular basis he said try and make me conscious of it every single hour the more I'm putting my body in that parasympathetic calm state so there were some really interesting things I learned there yesterday obviously I, I deal with my good friend Hassam who is um, a meditation expert and helps me with guided meditations and mantras and things like that to help me with uh, thoughts of healing and fearlessness and it's just great to add in this aspect of calm and hypnosis and then I guess allowing like I said those fears to come in and sniff their way around and just allowing them to be present because it's a, a, a natural mechanism of your subconscious mind to let those fears arise and it's a synergistic relationship with your conscious mind that they're happening and the more you can allow it to happen and then be it I guess one and calm with the fact that that's happening the the better you're going to be able to deal with stress and anxiety because you're not you're not battling anything you're not constantly thinking oh, I have to battle this negative thought with a positive thought and then losing that battle and then that takes away your fear of your fear or your anxiety of your anxiety so they're some of the basic things I learned out of my first session I got a lot out of that mentality of just allowing the fear to come in have a sniff around let it do its thing and be comfortable with it and the moment I started doing that yesterday I did feel an immediate calm and I have sort of carried that into today and he's also obviously given me daily exercises with a little tape of relaxation and meditation for relaxing the body so that has helped me a lot that's one of the I guess elements of the therapy we're gonna go, I need to get something to eat. We're gonna go to Ikea now? Mm-hmm. All right, let's do it.